I am incredibly excited that Stalker 2 is almost here. However, uh, in the lead up to the release date for the game, we now also have official PC system requirements, but not only that, uh, we also have NVIDIA with a blog post testing out performance both with DLSS off and DLSS on. Uh, only at the max graphics settings on these, but, again, but at a variety of resolutions and a variety of graphics cards. Uh, so that's pretty cool to dive into as well. Uh, but what if you just want the basics like, man, I just want to play at medium settings, 1080p, 60fps. Well, the system requirements chart has us covered here. It looks like it would take an RTX 2070 super class GPU. So that would also be like an RTX 4060, uh, an RX 5700 XT from AMD. It does look like you'll want an SSD with 160 gigabytes of space. That is quite a big install size. Um, and then a CPU that's at least an i7-9700K or a Ryzen 7 3700X. Now, uh, we'll definitely look at all the other configurations as well, but let's get an idea for what something like this would actually cost you right now. Uh, so I went over to jawa.gg and I searched for an RTX 2070 super-based pre-built system, and magically we had one pop right up. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure it meets the rest of the system requirements, and it's looking like um, a Ryzen 5 5500. So that's not the CPU that's listed, but I, uh, if you go ahead and check out some gaming benchmarks, the Ryzen 5 5500 does tend to perform similarly uh, to a uh, Ryzen 7 3700X in, uh, in gaming performance. It has fewer cores, but each core is more powerful, uh, that, that kind of thing. Anyway, the point is the, the overall gaming performance is similar here. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, which again is meeting the recommended uh, for a 1080p 60 medium uh, requirement at 16. And then uh, again, uh, we do have the RTX 2070 Super meeting that requirement as well. Uh, I also scrolled down here a bit and noticed that it does have a built-in Wi-Fi, which is a, a nice to have. And it also has a one terabyte SSD, uh, which would give you that storage space. And only that, but it has a name brand Seasonic power supply and it's 750 watts. It is just the stock CPU cooler, so do keep that in mind. Anyway, so... Um, uh, that would be a pretty good system. It looks like you can get that, um, again, this is used, uh, but for $550, and I could even save you $10 off your first purchase at jawa.gg using code ON10. Uh, and thank you to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. A uh, little more info about Jawa. If you haven't tried them out, definitely follow the link in the video description or pinned comment to take a look. It's a marketplace for gamers to sell and buy. Uh, so you're supporting other fellow gamers and people running small businesses. You could start your own small business uh, bu buying and uh, selling uh, you know, PC components. It's really cool. Uh, also, if you're just looking to like fund your upgrade by selling, they'll insta-buy CPUs and GPUs with instant offers. You can kind of scroll down a little bit here and hit the, um, ah, it's, it's usually pretty easy to find. Where is it? There it is, get an instant offer button. Uh, and it's a pretty simple and easy, uh, straightforward process there. But you could also become a seller on Jawa, set your own prices, make your own listings. It's really cool, but not only that, for the holidays, uh, you can celebrate with the holidays with epic deals up to 50% off. And uh, overall, stay tuned uh, from November 6th through the end of the year for great deals, uh, specifically for holiday deals. Um, and be sure to create an account and subscribe to get flash sale offers, giveaways, and other deals. And from November 22nd to December 2nd, which is Cyber Monday, uh, you'll get Jawa Deals of the Day, which will have in some incredible custom PC builds, components, peripherals, more. Anyway, highly recommend checking out Jawa to both buy and sell. Uh, get great deals on both, good buyer protections, seller protections, all of that. And again, use code ON10 for $10 off your first purchase. Uh, but what if you're looking at something other than the 1080p medium 60 FPS uh, type numbers? Well, if it looks like if you just want to play the game, you're going to need at least a GTX 1060 or an RX 580 or an Intel Arc A750. And I will say that that Arc A750 feels a little out of place compared to these other components here, hoping that that doesn't indicate that it's a bit of an underperformer. If we dive into a, a relative performance chart, by the way, if, you, if your GPU isn't one of the ones listed on the system requirements chart, I'd recommend um, this relative performance chart at Tech Power Up to get a good idea of click on the GPU that they're talking about and then scroll up and down to find your GPU listed and it'll give you a percentage difference 
uh, of your GPU versus that GPU, right? So you can get an idea if you're in the same kind of general ballpark. Here's what I mean about the A750 feeling a little out of place there, though, uh, because the 1060 and the 580 that they listed for AMD and NVIDIA seem, you know, roughly equivalent performance tier. Um, by the way, the performance they're saying here is low settings, 1080p, 30 FPS. So you're like, okay, I, I just want to play the game. 30 FPS is fine. Turn down all the graphics settings. Uh, but that A750, we got to scroll up a ways to get there. Uh, the A750 is generally almost double the performance according to this power, uh, tech power up chart. So that seems, like I said, a bit out of place there. Uh, maybe it's just that it couldn't quite make it to 1080p 60 medium, so they put it into this slot instead of that slot. Uh, since the A750 is generally weaker than uh, the, the stuff that they're listing for the, um, uh, the, the uh, higher end specs, but not by a whole lot, guys. It, it's not too far off there. The 2070 Super is only about 7% faster generally. 4060 is 15% faster. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is that A750 really kind of feels like it should have been in this medium uh, kind of 1080p 60 chart, but it, it made it into this chart, which I, does that indicate this game doesn't play well with Intel? I, it's possible. A lot of games do kind of underperform on Intel relative to other, uh, you know, AMD and NVIDIA hardware. It's just one of the things with Intel lately, I mean, not just lately, but just with their GPUs, it's actually been get, getting better lately. Um, but it can still be a thing. Anyway, that's something I noticed there. It also looks like CPU-wise to just get in the door for 30 FPS at low settings, uh, you'd need a i7-7700K or a Ryzen 5 1600X. If you want an idea of what sort of CPUs we're looking at here, that's nothing too crazy. The i7-7700K is a four core, eight thread processor from quite a while back. Um, I mean, it's a 2017 chip, but we are almost at the end of 2024. So we are talking, uh, you know, this was January 2017, so to January 2025, we're talking about an eight-year-old CPU. And then the Ryzen 5 1600X, six-core, 12-thread CPU uh, from, looks like, April of 2017. So seven, a little over seven years old on that one. Uh, again, the uh, 60 FPS numbers uh, required that 9700K and 3700X. Uh, which puts you around an eight core, eight thread CPU uh, from Intel from around 2018. So about five years ago uh, for that one. And the 3700X from AMD is an eight core, 16 thread part. And this one from about 2019. So about six years, six, a uh, little over six years old on that one. Now the other uh, higher settings do go up to higher end CPUs as well. But one thing I'll mention on that is a lot of times with system requirements charts, they uh, kind of increase the CPUs along the way with the GPUs, although oftentimes the higher resolutions and graphic settings are actually not more taxing on the CPU. It just happens to probably be the test system configurations that they put together to test the game, where they put you know older mid-range stuff and, and then put the you know stuff that, again, seems more equivalent generation and power-wise. It's a more balanced system. But in other words, if you can hit 60 FPS at 1080p, you can also usually hit 60 FPS at 1440p and at 4K on the same CPU because increasing the resolution doesn't usually increase the CPU demand. The only thing that might be increasing the CPU demand is that we're going from medium settings to high settings to epic settings. But like I said, a lot of graphic settings don't actually uh, increase the demand on the CPU in a very meaningful way. Um, so in other words, I would say that if you can get a solid 60 FPS here, I, I'd guess you, if you paired it with the stronger GPUs, you'd probably also be okay here, but it's pushing to higher refresh rates beyond that 60 FPS line, uh, where you'd um, be more likely to get CPU limited on the less powerful CPUs. Other graphic settings like ray tracing and things like that can also be pretty CPU demanding, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Also sometimes like NPC density and, and things like that, but anyway. Um, how about the GPU scaling up from here? So they're saying 1440p, 60 FPS at high settings, RTX 3070 Ti, RTX 4070 RX, RX 6800 XT. Notice it's also jumping up to recommending 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of 16. Now, whether that's actually necessary or whether it's just that was what was in the, P the higher end PC that they were testing on, again, something that's kind of inconsistent on system requirements charts sometimes. So, um, uh, it looks like you can run the game at least medium settings with 16 gigabytes. 
Uh, they're also mentioning that for 4K 60 at epic settings, you'd want at least a 4080 or a 7900 XTX. Now, I don't see any mention in these system requirements that they're relying on resolution scaling to hit these targets. However, just because they're not saying it doesn't mean it isn't true. Now, I'm not saying it is true, but here's where we're going to pull up our other major source for today's video. NVIDIA has, uh, in, as part of a larger post, uh, included performance charts for this game specifically. Now, while it has a lot of information here, the main thing that you need to keep your eye on is that this is specifically testing maximum settings. Now, I don't know whether the maximum settings are exactly the Epic settings or whether there's individual settings beyond the Epic preset that are also being turned on. Sometimes Unreal Engine 5 games might offer like a hardware ray tracing setting that's more demanding than just the software-based Lumen or something like that, right? And so that's a little unclear if these are matched settings. It, we also don't know exactly what scene in the game that NVIDIA chose to test um, because it's possible that the entire game might average out to 60, whereas like, a one minute benchmark run that happened to be used for uh, NVIDIA's internal testing uh, could have intentionally selected like the most demanding area of the game. So that's something to keep your eye out on. Anyway, let's dive a little bit into these charts. Uh, the uh, other really big thing you need to keep your eye on is the gray bar versus the green bar because the gray bar is showing the performance with DLSS off. The green bar is showing um, performance with DLSS on. Now for their 4K testing, which is what this one is, this is 4K resolution, uh, they are showing a um, DLSS set to the performance mode. Whereas when we look at some other charts here uh, that aren't 4K resolution, uh, then we're going to see uh, uh, DLSS at a different upscaling setting. But the other thing is they're also turning frame generation on. So the DLSS 3 on means their frame generation is on. By the way, if you're wondering if this game also has FSR 3 frame generation, the answer appears to be yes. Um, I, uh, AMD does publish a list of FSR 2 and 3 supported games, and Stalker 2 is on that list. And it is listed as FSR 3.1, which is really good to see, uh, because 3.1 uh, allows you to separate the frame generation from the upscaling. Meaning if you had like an RTX 2070 Super, like it was recommending for 1080p medium 60, uh, and you wanted to use DLSS upscaling, uh, but you wanted to use some frame generation, well, your 20 series GPU doesn't support that frame generation, right? But it would be able to turn on FSR frame generation, but if, because this is 3.1, it means you could still use DLSS upscaling, but FSR frame generation, which is nice. Anyway, Let's go ahead and jump back into uh, these charts a little bit. Um, so there's a couple of things I noticed here that seem a bit weird. First of all, the 4090 doesn't seem much more powerful than the 4080 Super uh, as, as tested here. One possibility is that they're testing in a scenario that gets somewhat CPU bottlenecked at around 50 FPS, but I'd be surprised if that was the case on a 14900K and I also would be surprised because if you look at their 1440p results, which would um, ease the burden on the GPU, but usually would keep CPU burden the same, at, considering we're still at maximum settings, the DLSS off numbers here are able to push to around 75 FPS. Although again, the 4080 Super is producing almost the same result as the 4090, which again would usually indicate that there's a CPU bottleneck. Now, I'd be more likely to believe that there's a CPU bottleneck at around 75 FPS if they're in like an NPC uh, heavy scene, but um, it's then strange that the 4K results um, are showing not too much separation here between the 4090 and the 4080. So I'm just gonna say something seems a little odd with these charts, but I'm not NVIDIA, so I don't, under I don't know how they tested the game, exactly what scene and what's going on here. Also, if you look at their 1080p results at maximum settings, you can see the 4090, the 4080 Super, and the 4070 Ti Super all seem to be hitting a wall in the low 80s until you kick on DLSS frame generation. So again, indicating that that looks awful lot like a CPU limited test, 
Um, but again, now the number for that lim CPU limited test is kind of pushing into the 80 something range. It's possible also that they're testing a longer portion of the game where parts of it are CPU limited and parts of it are GPU limited. Um, anyway, again, I don't know exactly how their test is working, but that's something to keep your eye on. Now, if we want a little more detail here, just to, for me to kind of call out some numbers, um, here we're at the 1080p results, which I think might be interesting for people on the uh, more real-world real GPUs, right? So if you're on an RTX 4060, for example, it looks like the game at 1080p maximum settings, so again, max settings, medium settings uh, are, uh, according to the system's requirement chart, going to get you closer to 60 FPS, but at maximum settings, it looks like you'll be closer to 43 FPS unless you use upscaling and or frame generation, which is what the green bar is showing you. Looks like the 4060 Ti at maximum settings is also only going to be at about 47.2, and it would take an RTX 4070 to break uh, 60 FPS uh, at native 1080p resolution if we're at the absolute maximum settings. So it does look like the maximum settings in this game are pretty heavy. Uh, but then as you can see, the uh, higher end GPUs seem to kind of stop scaling past about 85 FPS, which like I said, to me that reads like the 14900K may be hitting a CPU limit at around that performance level. But again, I don't have, it is not my testing. This is Nvidia's testing, so I can't look further into that. Uh, if we want to pop back over to the 1440p results uh, from NVIDIA, uh, we can see that at native 1440p resolution, which is what you'd see on these gray bars, um, we are going to, you know, I realize I can slide this window down. It's probably going to look a little nicer. Now you guys can actually see the, uh, uh, see the chart numbers up here. But anyway, um, here we're going to see that the 4060 Ti is only delivering a little over 30 FPS without uh, DLSS and frame generation. Notice that the super resolution here is set to quality mode. So that's quality mode uh, upscaling plus frame generation. Anyway, the RTX 4070 looks like it can't hit a native 1440p 60 FPS. It's only hitting 52. Uh, and then it would require, require quality uh, upscaling plus frame generation to hit 100 FPS. 4070 Super is hitting just under 60 FPS at a native 1440p, again, max settings. Um, and then, you know, green bar, DLSS, and frame generation, and you can kind of see how it goes from here. Again, the chart seems to kind of uh, look a little bit CPU limited or something like that when we start hitting the 4090. Um, uh, now, again, we could go back to that 4K chart super quickly and take a closer look. So again, 4K maximum settings without any upscaling. It looks like the 4090 is hitting a little over 50 FPS, and the 4080 Super is a little under 50 FPS. But then with DLSS performance plus frame gen, they're breaking 100. Uh, but again, that's relying on the DLSS and the frame gen. I don't mind so much using DLSS at 4K. Performance mode can be a little aggressive, but often looks all right. And again, their 1440p charts were based on uh, DLSS quality, which again, I think is fairly reasonable to use at 1440p on a lot of GPUs. Now, the last thing that they actually had here as well is some laptop GPUs. So they actually have some laptop systems uh, with a 13980HX CPU and 32 gigabytes of DDR5, and at 1080p, sorry, at 1440p resolution with quality upscaling and frame gen, they hit these green numbers, but at native 1440p, we're getting these gray numbers where we're looking at a 4090 laptop GPU, 4080 laptop GPU, and 4070 laptop GPU. Uh, then uh, they also have some 1080p results. So if you're on a 1080p laptop, it looks like uh, you, again, see the native resolution performance at max settings in gray, and you see the green being with DLSS quality and frame generation. So there we go. We've got a lot of performance numbers to go off of here, especially because we have NVIDIA's charts. Although, like I said, uh, NVIDIA's charts are at maximum settings, which for a lot of these graphics cards, I think would be a somewhat unreasonable choice. It would make more sense uh, you know, in a lot of games to play at medium or high settings. Um, and I think then the performance numbers would look a lot better. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, also it does appear like there's that little bit of CPU limit type stuff kind of going on uh, in those charts. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Again, do not forget to check out the awesome holiday deals at jawa.gg. 
Again, if you subscribe uh, and make an account, you'll get flash sale information as we head into the Black Friday deals and all of that. Definitely recommend it. And don't forget that you can use code OWEN10 for $10 off your first purchase. Please follow the link in the video description and or pinned comment.